Hey, it's Jill with Crickflex, and a few people have been asking me um, to do from beginning to end, including how I purchase my files, how I save my files, how I print them, how I cut them. What my objective is today is I'm going to start from the very, very beginning. I'm going to record as much as I possibly can and hopefully have covered all bases on how to do what I do. I'm going to be continue to work on scrapbook pages, and the next page I'm actually going to be working on is... Toy Story. It's actually Buzz Lightyear. What I did is I went to the Disney um, link that I gave yesterday, Disney and Cartooned, and I picked out the Zootopia. I picked out the Zootopia a while back. I don't know if I even have anything for that, but in the Toy Story, which I already had some, but for the price, I add on because there, there are some digital background papers that I don't already have. <clears throat> Once I purchase them and it's confirmed, they automatically download. I work on a Mac, so all I do is click on download for both of them and they go into my downloads here. Then what I do is I open in Finder. The reason I want to open them in Finder is because I want to actually open the file. If I drag and drop the entire file, it goes into my ex external hard drive as a file, just like this. I don't want it as a file because I already have one file um, per per theme. So I'm going to go into the Toy Story file and I'm going to open these. These are all zipped files so it's going to have to open them, unzip them. And I'm going to unzip this one and unzip that one and unzip this one. Now I do have a, a, a particular file that are all my digitals. And then I also have um, saved by theme. And sometimes I save them twice. It depends. I'm going to grab these and drag and drop them into my Toy Story file. Then what I'm going to do, do is I'm going to delete that one. Because I've already moved them. And I'm just... Which one did I just move? Yep, that's right. And then I'm going to go to this one. And I'm going to drop those in there. I'm going to back up. And I'm going to delete that. And come on. Then here are all the images, which I may already have. But like I said, I don't really care. They, if they only have one that I don't have, I'm good with that. Because there's a lot of images in these files. And isn't that the one I just opened? Nope. Yeah, that's the one I just opened, I think. PNG, yep, these are. Let me just make sure. And if they go in here and they're all messed up, I just cl click on sort of my name. And in here are files that are ready to go, and they're also files that are Im images. I just want to make sure I have the right ones. Yep, I do. So I'm going to go back here and delete this one. And let's go and see what this one has. <clears throat> and I am going to drag and drop those in my two-story. Sometimes when I'm saving them, when I work on them, they... When I save them, I save them to my external hard drive, and then I go in later, and all these files that you see, these need to be pulled into their perspective files. It's just that I work on so many at once that I just save them and then go back later when I have time and, and move them where they need to go. And let's see what this one is. I swear that was the one I just did. I might have downloaded some of these twice. Yes, I did this one. So just to make sure before I delete them, and I did this one. So I'm going to delete that. <clears throat> I think I may have down, downloaded some of them twice. I just want to verify before I throw them out. Yeah, I did. Okay, I'm going to just trash these. Not only that, I, I, will, I have so many of them, it, and they're repeated. In the particular one for the Toy Story, I actually have the numbers. I have the images. I have all sorts of stuff here to play with. Now I'm going to take and back up on this one. And I also have a backup external hard drive. And the reason that I have a backup to them, they're only like, you know, 29 or 30 bucks approximately. And the reason I have two is because the first one that I had, I would carry it to use it on my laptop if I was going somewhere. And I accidentally dropped it. If you drop these, they can't be fixed. They're very, very, very sensitive. And I did not know that. Um, however, I learned. And I'm telling you, <laughs> make sure that you 
are comfortable with, like I, I have an iMac that I work on and do not move these, these externals. However, there have been occasions that I've had to go work with one of my daughters and therefore I've had to take my hard drive with me. We share files, but we don't, we get so busy that we may not have sent a file that the other one needs. So sometimes there's a t an occasion that I need to take the hard drive with me. I do not save anything onto my computer. I used to have my library, which is in here. I lost it when I did some, some cleaning and I can't drag and get it back in. I have the library in here that has all my files I made over the years, but um, it's right here, but it will not allow me to open it again. And I have no idea why, and I haven't called Silhouette about it because it's just not that important to me. Uh, I, I've got those files. Some of those are from so far back that I wouldn't use them now anyway. Okay, now I'm going to open. i got two Zootopia, and I'm going to drag and drop them in my Zootopia file. If I already have a file, that means I've already got some images, but I may not have the same ones. So, then I'm going to delete these and delete these. Come on. All right, I am done with that. Now, if I go in, since I'm going to do a Toy Story layout, I'm going to go in and pick my images, and I am going to do the layout from beginning to end, how I do it, and I will be back. However, I am going to pick my colors first so as to not take forever on this, this recording. All right, be right back. I am going to start with this one. I'm going to make my papers that I want for my backgrounds because I'm going to do a complete file on this one, a uh, pre-pack that I will use for two-page 12 by 12 layout. Um, I have a lot of Disney papers, but I decided so that I can show you from beginning to end how I do it. I went over here and I made a box from right here. And that box, I want to be 12 by 12 inch square. Oops, not 103. 12 would work better. There we go. Now, I am going to duplicate that. I think I'm going to make three to start with. So I've got my three 12 by 12 boxes here. And now what I'm going to do is decide what color I want them to be. So I'm going to minimize this a little bit and move it over to the side so I can open my hard drive next to it. And I'm going to go to my Toy Story file. Uh, I got a file or two here to go through and there's my Toy Story and what I'm going to do first is I'm going to pick my backgrounds. Now the pictures that I'm working on are of my family on the Buzz Lightyear ride. It's dark inside and the little cars that we ride have the Buzz Lightyear kind of um, buttons that he has and the colors are the green and the blue so what I'm going to do is try and go with the colors that are on that in that um, theme. I'm trying to think here. Toy Birthday Party 42 Infinity. I think I'm going to grab that one for an image I'm going to use. And let's go back here again. Whoops, I didn't mean to close that. What was I thinking? And let me pick my background color. Oh, you know, I'm just grabbing a bunch of things as I go here because they're so cute. Here's all the pages I've ever done in and uh, this theme. But where are my digital prints? Let's see here. This one I think would be good. I'm going to drag and drop it in the box I have highlighted. And there I have the theme, the color I'm going to go with. Then let me do the second one. Because I'm going to use these papers as my layers. And let me see what other one do I want here. There wasn't any red. I'm looking at my picture as I do this. There's green. Let me see. I think this might be of the little aliens. No, that's Buzz Lightyear. So I like that. I'm going to use that as part of it. And then one other color I need to pick. Let me see what this is. Nope, I don't like that. So if I make a mistake, I want to pick a different color. I can just drag and drop whatever I want in there 
so I can see it. That's not within my colors that I want. So I'm going to try this one because a lot of times you can't see them real good in there. You know what? I think it's going to be this yellow. Whoops. I'm going to undo that because I did the whole. You have to be careful when you drop them. You know what? I think I'm going to go with that one. These colors are what I'm going to choose. So now I've got my papers that I'm going to use. Now what I'm going to do with them, I don't know. Um, let me see here. I want to take some images of Buzz. Let me see what I grabbed over here to Affinity and Beyond. I want some of these that say, ooh, I'm going to grab some of the little aliens and part of this Buzz's outfit that got, uh, doo -doo -doo. I guess you see what they are. Oh, this is a really cool one too. I'm not doing these right now, but for parties, these things are awesome to use at birthday parties for the condiments. If you're showing, having hot dogs or something. Anyway, just thought I'd show you that. I'm just going to zip out of that one. Okay. And let me get back here. Um, oh, And I want to pick, I think I'm going to pick this of Buzz. And when I was talking about the 300 DPI, the reason you want to make it sure it's at least 300. So look, this is 25 inches tall. And he, I'm going to zoom in a little bit so that you can see how crystal clear he is. It's awesome. These print out fabulous. So when you go to buy your files, if it doesn't tell you what the DPI is, I wouldn't. I would stay away from purchasing it um, because you need to have them. If you're talking about a two foot piece you'd like to make, it has to be 300 DPI, or you're going to get blurry. And sometimes you just have to try and fix it using glitters um, and accenting it. Because, ooh, I didn't look at this paper. Let me see this one. I don't know what this is of. Oh, I kind of like the alien better. Uh, let me see this one. No, that's from his shirt. Let me see what this, I think this is the same one of the alien. Nope, that's the one I grabbed a buzz. But I think I like this buzz better than this one because it has more white in it. And that's his little buddy. And I'm going to grab this one. Okay, I'm done grabbing the pieces I'm going to use. So... Now, you do, these are PNGs for those of you that ask how you can't trace them for some reason. Well, they're PNGs and they don't have a white background. They have an, a uh, transparent background. They still have to be traced and remove that or it will cut like a box. I'll show you here in just a second. I'm going to trace and detach this one. And if I move this aside, oops, I got a little bitty, 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 bitty white there. Let me see how big this whole piece is. I am going to take the eraser. No, I'm not. I'm going to put a white around him and um, offset so I don't care. If I don't cut it out, I'm going to show you this one large here. <clears throat> Again, if I don't and I go to outline it, let me take and show you with an offset what happens on this. Offset. It's a box because it's got a transparent box, box around it. So if you do it like this, it will cut that box out. It will not cut your image out. So you have to make sure you go to the select area and trace. <clears throat> I'm going to use a couple of these guys. I haven't decided how I'm going to use them yet, but I am. And that one took away a lot of white. So let me try something first before I throw that away. Let me make him a little larger to see. I do want, I think I'm going to have to go ahead and take the eraser and go around this tiny piece here. And I'm going to erase this tiny piece. When I do an offset, it might not cover what I need to have it cover. So I need these white pieces because I can clearly see on his hand and on his leg, it did not trace it. Because the trace feature on your software is by colors. If it's white, it, it's, it's not going to get it. Now, I can go and click on this piece, put it over here, and do a trace, an offset just to see. It looks like it might be okay. 
Um, I think there might be a little bit more erasing. Okay, right in here. It's a lot of times when I do the white, they they aren't that easy. They're, they can be difficult to, especially when you're doing things revolving around a wedding, for example. Let me try it. This offset, okay, that looks right. So I don't want the offset. I'll throw that away, but I want this white piece and I want it to go right. Let me zoom in a little bit more to make sure I have it right, right there. And in, in his hand, there we go. And this piece goes, where does this one go? Oh, right here, I see it right there. And a lot of times I can do the offset and fix that. The problem that I have if I rely on the offset, if the offset is wider than the piece, I see a piece here missing too, but it's not in here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this whole piece. First thing I'm going to do is group it. Then I am going to offset it. And I'm going to change the offset to 0 0.05. Okay. And I'm going to make it white. Actually, if you make it a color, this might be easier for you to do. I see right here, I take my eraser because I see right here some pieces that did not trace correctly. So I'm going to take my eraser and wipe them up. And I know that I could have zoomed in and done it a whole different way, but I'm showing the way that's actually to me the easiest. I'm going to take this object, I'm going to release compound, then I'm going to take it and cover it and weld it all together because those little pieces that were in here by the hand that didn't show, they, <clears throat> I want them to just weld them all together and that's all you have to do. It's easiest. This piece is going to go right in here and I'm going to go ahead and turn it a little bit and match it up. I'm going to turn a little tiny bit more. I don't want it hanging off over here. And I'm going to take and make my eraser a little bit smaller. Some of you might be thinking, man, this is just way too much work for such a, there's got to be an easier way. And I'm sure for folks there are. However, for me, this works quick and easy. I'm going to modify and weld. So this piece is all not one. And I'm going to put it white. And then I'm going to take him and come on, bring to the front. Then I'm going to box the two together. I'm going to go over here where it looks kind of like a doorknob and I'm going to center them. There, my offset is perfect. And now I'm going to group them. And just so you can see when I color the white line, there he is. He's perfect. And so he's done. And of course, I'm not going to make him that big for my layout. So I'm going to minimize him down a bit. This one, let me see. I haven't done the offset yet. And I can see a piece missing here, up in here. Let me back it up a little. And I am going to offset him first, just like I did the other one. And offset. And then I'm going to put him back here. And I don't see anything other than this little bit. Let me color it white. And... Release compound, that line is still there, so it must be, if I zoom in, I guarantee you there's a broken line, and there is. So what I'm going to do is just make a piece, doesn't matter what the size, I'm going to color it white. I'm going to put it in here, where I see that there's a broken, right in here, this bit right here, there's a broken, so when it did the trace, it broke it. It didn't do it completely. And I have no idea the word I'm looking for, guys, so just stay with me here. Okay, there's the white. I'm going to put him to the front. Oh, somebody also asked how I get these areas in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to taste, take the trace tool again, and I'm just going to trace this area. And I'm going to bring my threshold in just enough to make sure that this here is closed in and this here is closed. And I'll show you why. I'm going to keep tracing. I need to have that one spot open or close. It looks like it's going to take a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and take this piece. And then I'm going to 
release compound and I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to stick it in there. I'm going to group those two together and make it a compound path. Now, the other one that I want is right in here. Let me get rid of all this. I don't need this garbage here. I hope this isn't getting too long for anybody. I'm going to trace just this piece here. Whoops. And right in there, bring the threshold up. There we go. I got it. Now I'm going to do trace because I just want that piece. I'm going to go to object, release compound, and sometimes if you bring them in really tight to try and eliminate, um, to make sure everything is is cut out smoothly or looks like it is, like these little cutout areas when I did the trace the very first time, um, let me see what would happen if I did the trace. I'm trying to see if it would recognize these in here, how high I'd have to bring the threshold to get every bit to close. There, it's at 100%. This is still open here. If I did, I would have to do a cut, uh, the trace with the outlines, <clears throat> in order for it to cut this and this piece, but it would also cut out these pieces. So I don't do it that way because, again, you'd have to do um, the trace and then uh, hit this trace, then I would have to take and select the two, go to object and modify and crop. And if I did that, it's going to cut out this, this, all these little pieces. And I don't want that. That is why I don't do it like that. Okay, I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to put these two together and I am going to center them. Okay, I'm going to continue on doing what I'm doing and I will come back when I get to the next step. Okay, see you in a minute. Again, I've got all of these images sized down how I want them and ready to print. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to print out my background papers. I need to go up. I'm using the EcoTank 16500 Epson printer. Again, that's the EcoTank 16500. Uh, it has tanks of ink versus cartridges. Highly recommend. It's far more expensive. However, with what I, how much I print, it paid for itself the first month. It's 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 like a thousand dollars when you get it on sale versus a couple hundred. However, the amount of money you'll spend again on the eco tanks, they are large. They print. Uh, I I can't tell you how long because it's not a fair judgment. Depends on how much you use it. Uh, I have found it to be far advantageous to have that versus the cartridge type and also the refills for the the eco tanks are twenty dollars each versus forty fifty dollars each okay enough of that so i'm going to print these first thing i need to do is i need to go to file print page setup again i'm working on a mac and it may be different for other printers or other pcs i'm sorry i'm going to pick the 12 by 18 paper even though i'm doing a 12 by 12 i want the heavy do the heavy paper and right here, you got to make sure you have orientation when you're printing items because I want it to go the direction of my paper. It's not that I would never choose. I have never choose. I have never chosen this side. I always have it this way. And I'm going to hit OK. Then I'm going to go ahead and go up here and go print. And All right, there we go. And I'm going to go to layout. Up here it tells me I've got the ET16500 series. I have my paper layout. I want print settings because I want it to go to rear paper feed. I'm going to feed all of these prints and my 12 by 18 paper from the rear paper feed slot. And I want my, my print to be fine. I want it the best. And I'm going to hit print. Now, with the feed from the back, I can. It, if you make sure to put that setting on, you can go ahead and print numerous items that will go into a queue and continue to print as you, as you put the paper in. If you don't pick that and you put auto print and you're going to use the back feed, 
you've got to race to the printer to get that paper in there before the next image comes through. Otherwise, you're going to get an error that the printer does not match the size. So I'm going to take this one off. Then I'm going to go ahead and print this one. And again, it will go into a queue, so it doesn't matter. I don't have to race back to the printer. I'm going to put a piece in. No, I'm going to show you how I do that. I'm not going to do that right now. And it takes a little bit for it to, more things you have on your mat, the longer it takes to load. And now I'm going to do the third piece. Guys, I have not seen any of these print out, so I'm not real sure which ones I will use or not use or add to it. I'm going to print that one. I may be adding some other papers to it. Still, if I put it together as a set, um, this is the pieces it will include. And then I'm going to take that one off. I'm going to go up to my papers and it's go to my registration marks and I'm going to put them on. And I'm picking the Cameo Portrait Cure is my my marks that I want, my registration marks. Then I'm going to go ahead and add my pieces to the mat here. And this one I am going to rotate and stick it up there. If you rotate it versus flipping it around, it's still going to go in the same direction that you have. If you flip it because you want it to fit another part of the paper, it will um, flip your image around so it's facing the other direction. And that isn't what I want to do. So I'm going to squeeze all these in here and then I'm going to mess around to see how I can get them all in here. And move this one up a little bit. Remember I have the white outline on it that I don't want to. I've got the red box around here showing that's telling me the the area I need to stay within. And what I think I'm going to do for this is Okay. And I want to see if I can fit this 2018 in here. I'm just not real sure I can. And let me try twisting this a little bit. And let me see. Well, guys, I think I can fit it. I'll move him up a tiny bit. And maneuvering these around so that I can get these. You want to make the maximum use of your paper as you possibly can. And moving things around, this one I can actually make a little smaller and move it up. I have no restrictions on the size because it's not to fit in anywhere. They're strictly, actually, he might be a little too big too. I'm going to size him down. I don't want my images to take over my paper, my layout. So typically I make them five inches and it would be a good call on this one to make these. I can tell by looking at, at them on this page that they're going to be a little too large. So, and you can make a 12 by 12 page and put your pieces all over it and decide how you want to do it to determine the sizes. I didn't do that because it's all going to depend on my pictures. Okay, there we go with those and then I'm going to print them. I'm going to do those last is because they have the registration marks on them. The sheets of paper did not. So, I'm going to put that out and then I'm going to resort to using my camera now to show you how I go from there. I hope this doesn't get too long for any of you. Okay guys, I'm over here at my printer. I just did this video and the thing wasn't on record, so I hope I did it right this time. Um, I've gone over the printer a little bit, and that, you may not be able to see it because the way that my room is set up, I can't. I'll, I'll take some pictures. Anyway, it's an ET16500. It's an Epson. Epson. It's not much different in size as the other 7620 or 7610. Um, however, it uses so much less ink. I have a whole thing full of ink here because they sent me some 
um, I don't remember if some came with it and I'd ordered some because I had some coupons I had to use up. But this is the black one and this is the yellow, red, and, and blue that this is the size they come. And I have not had to refill my machine uh, quite a while. But I use my coupons, which is, reminds me I have one for 40% off. And let me see, the last one is going to be the, actually the last print is going to be an invoice. It'll just switch automatically. No, it won't. I'm going to have, I don't know how I'm going to do that. I haven't ever done that before. I don't know why I printed it now. But anyway, these are going to be the, the actual um, die cuts that are printing out now. And everything that I'm going to be using is already on my desk. So.